Hello, my name is Detina Zhang. I'm a research scientist in Harvard University. Our topic today on We Speak Science is ciliogenesis and intraflagellar transport. I'd like to start this presentation by telling you a story that happened in 2006. Alessandro Del Piero, one of the greatest Italian players of all the time, will this sport, will Italy be the world champions? Everyone is so intense. Alex Del Piero runs towards the ball and... No, there's no signal, the antenna is not working. What's going on? This cannot be happening right now. You try to fix the antenna, but again, there is no signal. You don't know whether Del Piero scored until the neighbor next door shouts, he did it. Italy is our World Cup champions. Good. Apologies to the French. I told you this story as I want to emphasize the importance of the antenna in transmitting the signal at the right time. Without antenna, you get the wrong signal and the information is lost. Almost every cell in our body has an antenna that is named cilia that helps the cell communicate with each other. As I'm talking right now, quite possibly cilia is helping my neuron cells in the brain to communicate and tell me what to say. Possibly they are telling your neuron cells in your brains to listen to my presentation or not. I hope you do. An important aspect of ciliogenesis, or otherwise called cilia formation, is that cilia rises up and remains in place until the cell divides, at which point cilia disappears only to build back up when division is complete. So cilia formation is coordinated. When a cell divides, you don't have cilia. When a cell rests, this is in G0 or G1 phase, you have cilia. Cilia fall in two categories, motile and non-motile. They differ in their structure. Unlike motile cilia, primary cilia have an I plus zero marketable structure and lack the key elements required for ciliary motility, such as the central pair of microtubules, the radial spokes, and the outer and inner dining arms that power microtubule sliding. Each cilium performs a repetitive bit cycle consisting of a rest state, recovery stroke, and an effective stroke, as it's shown in this animation from left to right. Normally, they are present in large numbers that consist of 200 300 individual cilia per cell, and they beat in an orchestrated wave to move material over the surface of the cell. For example, mucociliary clearance in the lung, cerebrospinal fluid movement in the brain, and ovum and sperm transport along the reproductive tract. Shown here is an electron microscope image of a motile cilia. They are present in large numbers per cell. Shown here is an electron microscope image of a primary cilia. They are present as a single copy per cell, and they do not beat. For this reason, they were considered by scientists as vestigial organelles with little functional importance. However, this changed 15 years ago when defects in the primary cilia were found to be the origin of many human genetic diseases collectively known as ciliopathies. A common symptom of all these ciliopathies is polycystic kidney disease, which involves abnormal cell proliferation and differentiation leading to the fluid cysts in the kidney and therefore PKD. In the United States alone, about 600,000 people have PKD. It is the fourth leading cause of kidney failure. It is found in all races and occurs equally in men and women. To better understand the role of cilia and its role in ciliopathies, it is necessary to understand how cilia is built. Just like a skyscraper is built, by building bricks or blocks coming together. Cilia is built by ciliary proteins or ciliary blocks. The synthesis of the ciliary proteins does not occur within the cilia themselves. The proteins are synthesized in the cytoplasm and must be transported in the cilium along the microtubules 
through an active process called IFD transport. This process is essential for construction of cilia. It was first documented 21 years ago when gliding chlamydomonocells cells were viewed using microscopy. As a graduate student at the time, Kosminski saw bidirectional movement of particles while they move along the length of the axonemal macrotubal doublets. Shown here is an animation of how the IFT particles might move. Once proteins are synthesized in the cell body, they move to the tip of the cilia. They do this by a protein called kinase. At the tip of the cilia, proteins are released. A conformation change occurs in the kinase, rendering it inactive. In contrast, dynein protein becomes active and transports proteins from the tip of the cilia to the basal body for recycling. It is thought that around 100 particles are transported to the tip of the cilia in an anterograde transport in one minute, and twice as much retrograde particles are transported to the base of the cilia. A lot of cilia research nowadays is focusing to better understand the process of 5D and cilia formation. Many questions remain to be answered. For example, what are the IFT proteins that are transported to the cilia? What is the mechanism of this transportation? How do motor proteins, kinase and dynein work? In 2007, it was revealed that mutations in IFT80 leads to germ syndrome, a genetically heterogeneous disorder caused by variation in different genes. This disease is characterized by long, narrow thorax, short rib, short long bones, and polydactyly, extra digits. A lot of work has been done in zebrafish to better understand how depletion of IFT80 leads to JATD. To better understand ciliopathies, scientists are using mouse model or zebrafish model. Zebrafish is used as a model as it's inexpensive, it's small enough to be managed easily, and most importantly, fish embryo development is similar to other species, so it provides a basis for comparative embryological studies. E shows a wild type normal zebrafish embryo. F shows a zebrafish embryo lacking the IFT80. One can clearly see the difference. Zebrafish IFT80 knockdown embryos are characterized by large kidney cysts as shown by the arrow and curved tail. This phenotype is rescued once IFT80 morpholinus is injected back to the zebrafish as shown in G. In conclusion, cilia is the origin of many human genetic diseases, collectively known as ciliopathies. IFT transport is essential for formation of cilia. Current research is focusing on understanding the mechanism of cilia formation and its function in signaling pathways. Thank you very much. We speak science.